Hi all, today we are going to discuss about surge impedance loading of transmission line. So in the last class, we have seen the characteristic impedance which is given by square root of small z by small y or this I can write as small z I can multiply with L and this y also I can multiply with L because multiplying both in numerator and denominator, this becomes the total impedance divided by total admittance of your transmission line or here you can observe that this characteristic impedance is independent of the length because the length length is coming as common. So it is nothing but the impedance per unit length and admittance per unit length as it is independent of the length and it indicates the characteristic of your line because the value of the z because we know z is equal to r plus jx and the value of this y, y is equal to g plus jb. So, this indicates what is the characteristic of your line, how much is the value of the R plus Jx ratio with G plus Jb, that is why it is called as characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So, now practically if you are taking for a case of heavy, because practically we go for heavy conductor which is made up of copper or aluminum and well insulated line. So, generally this value of R and G are very less, so they can be neglected. So, when you are neglecting the value of R and G, so will, Z will become equal to Jx and Y will become equal to Jb. So, the impedance of a loss free transmission line because R and G are absent, the losses are absent. So, that is called as the surge impedance of your transmission line. So, surge impedance of your transmission line will be equal to Jx divided by Jb or X is equal to because we know this is omega L and this will be equal to omega C. So, this I can write as square root of L by C. So, we can tell that surge impedance is the ratio of L by C. This indicates what is the ratio of L and C of your system. So, practically you can see here this L and C both are independent of the frequency because frequency component is cancelling out independent of frequency. So, we can tell that whatever the ratio is coming, this is pure resistive because we are taking the ratio so that the frequency is cancelling or it is independent of the frequency. So, we can call that this respective load is called as the pure resistive load. So, I am summarizing the surge impedance is the characteristic impedance of a loss free line. So, if you take your transmission line in the case of transmission in the L will be dominating compared to C. So, this surge impedance for the case of transmission line will vary from 400 to 600 ohms. This is for the case of transmission line. Whereas, if you go for the cables, for the cables the conductors are placed side by side, so automatically the capacitance is dominating the inductance. So, for the case of cables this value varies from 40 to 60. This is for the case of underground cables and this is for transmission lines. This is what is obtained practically. Getting it? So, now how to calculate this surge impedance? So, we can calculate the surge impedance. So, measurement of surge impedance. So, how can we measure it? So, this surge impedance can be measured by measuring impedance at the sending end when, so we have to do the two tests. First one is the line at the receiving end is open circuited, this is the first one. And the second one is the line at the receiving end is short circuited. So, in both the cases we calculate the source impedance. Let us see each one of them. So, in the first case if you take because the sender receiving end it is open circuited. So, R, IR is equal to 0. So, if you substitute in the equations ABCD equations that what we have derived. So, Vs will be A times of VR plus B times of IR. So, IR is equal to 0 this becomes A times of VR and similar way this Is will become equal to C times of Vr. So, from this I can calculate the ZOC will be equal to Vs divided by Is because it is conducted under open circuit conditions. So, Vs by Is, so this ratio will become equal to A divided by C. Let us take it as equation number 1. So, now in the similar way coming to the second test, in the second test what we are doing? We are short circuiting the terminal. So, Vr will be equal to 0. When Vr is equal to 0, Vs will becomes B times of Ir and Is will be equal to D times of IR. Everyone agree with me? So, from this I can calculate my short circuit impedance at the sending end because it is under short circuit conditions. This will be Vs by Is is equal to B divided by D. Let us take it as equation number 2. So, now I am cross multiplying or multiplying 1 and 2. 
this becomes a by c multiplied by b by d because we know a is equal to d in the transmission line so it will cancel out so this will become b by d this is equal to zoc into zsc so let us try to write the equations what is b and what is d we know b is equal to zc into sin h of gamma l and c is 1 by zc into sin h of gamma l so this value is equal to zoc into zsc so this if you are calculating so this will become zc will come to numerator this will become zc square is equal to zoc into zsc this is what we are getting so from this i can calculate my value of the characteristic impedance or the surge impedance this will be equal to zoc into zsc because practically the resistance and conductance are very less we can call the surge impedance and characteristic as one and the same in practice so this is square root of zoc into zsc now let us see what is surge impedance loading so here i am writing on the glass screen so the handwriting will not come properly so i am keeping the complete material handwritten material of what each and every lecture in the link in the description below so please go to the description of the video there i have provided the google drive link you can download the complete material from there so now let us go to surge impedance loading so surge impedance loading this is defined as the load of unity power factor that can be delivered by the line of negligible resistance so this is given by p of x r so this is v r l square divided by z not this is generally given in megawatts so both voltage and impedance they are represented in kilos so it comes in megawatt so this where this vrl so this vrl is the receiving end voltage in kv and the value of z not is the surge impedance surge impedance in ohms that means your load impedance is equal to the surge impedance in that case what is the amount of power that can be transferred so that is called as the surge impedance loading so this is sometimes also called as natural power natural power that means this is the power that can be transmitted if the line is a lossless transmission line so this can be used why this is used this can be used for comparison of loads that can be carried by transmission line of different voltages you can see here this surge impedance loading that pr is coming as it is proportional to the voltage and it is inversely proportional to the impedance so if you want to increase your value of the surge impedance so what should we do if you want to increase this this can be increased by increasing vrl or by decreasing the value of z not so let us see each one of them so first one going to the vrl so if you are increasing the vrl automatically the surge impedance loading is increasing or power transfer capability of your line is increasing that's why practically you can see nowadays we are going for higher and higher voltages but the problem is there is a limit up to which you can go for the voltage that means beyond some limit the cost of the insulation and the maintenance crosses the saving in the value of power transmission that means saving in the conductor so that's why there is a limit upper limit on the value of vrl now coming to the z not so this value of z not we have seen this is equal to square root of l by c so this l by c that means the capacitance can be increased and the inductance can be decreased by decreasing the gap between the transmission lines that means whatever is the distance between transmission lines it should be decreased to decrease the value of z not but there is a constraint that transmission lines while desiring that distance is already fixed in the optimal manner so the distance cannot be decreased further to so much extent so this is not possible in practice so always in practice we go for the artificial methods that means in the artificial methods we can go for decreasing the value of l and c but here you have to remember along with the surge impedance there is one more parameter which is going to decide the stability of the system so let us see it first so first one i know that z not is equal to l by c and there is a second one we have seen the propagation constant the propagation constant we have seen gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta we have seen so practically if it is a loss free line so only j beta will be there if you are neglecting r and g so this will become j omega into square root of lc so this will be equal to j beta only because only j term will be remaining because active term that means resistance and g term we are neglecting because actually this will be equal to square root of r plus jx multiplied by g plus jb 
So this R and G we are neglecting. That's why this becomes J is coming out omega into that X component in that L is there, C is there in B. So that is coming here. That is a reason. So now this beta determines the torque angle. Torque angle delta between Vs and Vr. We are going to prove this in the coming classes. How this beta is going to affect the value of the delta. So the main thing what I want to tell is if the value of beta is increased, then automatically the stability of your system will decrease. The stability limit of your system will decrease. So that's why whenever you are making the changes in Z0, you have to take care that the beta value is not increased. So how the beta is going to affect? This I am going to discuss in the coming classes in power transmission equations or the power equations of the transmission line there I will discuss this thing in detail there. So now let us see what are the different artificial methods that can be used. So first one is the using the shunt capacitor. We can keep the shunt capacitor. So if you are adding the shunt capacitor. So adding the shunt capacitor what happens the capacitance of your line will increase. So now you can see that Z0 is equal to square root of L by C. So when your value of the C is increased so value of Z0 is decreased. But you can see here the value of J beta, this will be equal to J omega into square root of LC. When C is increased, what is happening to beta? The beta is also increasing. So when the beta is increased, what will happen? The stability is decreased. This is the problem. That's why shunt capacitor is not preferred for increasing or decreasing the value of surge impedance. Generally, the value of shunt capacitors are used only for reactive power compensation or for maintaining the voltage at the receiving end. This also I am going to discuss where in detail in the coming classes. So what is the shunt capacitors? What are their significance? Why they are used? Then coming to the second one, series capacitor. So series capacitor is one which will be inserted in series. So now if I am adding a series capacitor, so if you are adding the series capacitor, what will happen? The series capacitor because the inductance and capacitance are connected in series. This is nothing but the RL circuit. We know in the RL circuit, there will be difference of the reactance. The reactances are subtracted. So as the reactances are subtracted, so automatically the value of the L will decrease. When the value of L is decreased, we have seen the value of Z0 is equal to square root of L by C. The effective inductance decreases because of that the value of Z0 is decreased. So our purpose is served. And coming to coming to beta, this will become J omega into square root of LC. Because the value of L is decreased, automatically this leads to decrease in the value of beta. When beta is decreased, then the stability is also improved. This is another advantage. And there is one more advantage. As the value of inductance is decreased, automatically the line drop because this, this is the transmission line. This is my sending and voltage. This is my receiving and voltage. The line drop will be equal to I into this X. This or we can tell that what is the value of the indirect that means reactance that is in series. So that will be the drop I into ZL. So if your value of the inductance is decreased, so automatically this voltage drop will decrease. So that is second advantage. So we can tell that the voltage drop in line decreases. So automatically the voltage profile is improved. But there is a disadvantage of the series capacitor. If you are connecting the capacitor in series, whenever the fault current comes, when the fault current is passing through this, because this fault current will pass through the capacitor, because capacitor will have a limit up to how much current it can withstand. Under fault conditions, as the fault current passes through the capacitor, there is a chance your capacitor will spoil. So in order to protect the capacitor, we have to protect some protecting devices. So still now no satisfactory protection devices have derived. That is a major limitation of using the series capacitors. Otherwise, series capacitor have so many benefits. I hope the concept of the surge impedance, characteristic impedance and surge impedance loading is clear to you. In the coming classes, I am going to give the complete proof of each and every statement we have discussed in this topic because here I want to brief all the things related to surge impedance that I have discussed briefly. So a complete detail analysis of this we are going to do in the coming classes from there we will proceed to facts devices. So I hope everything is clear to you. If you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.